Us Brits spent an eye watering £45 billion going on holiday last year. The anticipation of those two weeks in the sun make the other 50 bearable. Just about. Those 14 nights on the beach get us through everything, from the bone-chilling damp to the improved rail timetables. They even make your insufferable boss sufferable. For two weeks a year, we get to forget, if we can, about the daily grind and the pressures of life. It's time to relax, put down our screens and interact with our friends and family. And who are all the Xbox? Xbox. Oh, still. With 16 million of us heading to Spain for sun, sea and more booze than a pantomime villain, the love affair that began in the 70s is still very much alive. To be honest, I've probably met more Brits out here than I have Spanish. And for most of us, the two-week package deal during the summer holidays is still king of the sandcastle. Families, lads on the lash, romantic couples and screaming kids. Oh, oh, oh. Running together to share the pool, sun lounges and the odd veruca, it's a petri dish of Britain, bacteria and all. It's a chance to try something new. Yeah, There's like only it. one thing I won't eat you there. Elephants. Do something stupid that you can regret forever. We woke up with matching tattoos on our bums the night after the gay bar. Well, I've got glitter on my bum sheet. Or just get blind drunk and try your luck. I will go out, right, and I will get any girl that I want because I am, in my eyes, I am unreal. Join us for the full Brits Abroad experience. Find out just why we still love our Spanish holes and the truth about those special two weeks as we go inside the secret world of the holiday resort. <laughs> Nearly one third of us opted for large resorts on all-inclusive packages last year. Two hours from Barcelona, nestled on the golden sands of the Costa Brava, is the Hotel Guitart in Lorette de Mar, where 250 staff cope with over 2,000 guests, ploughing through 1.2 tonnes of bacon, 7,000 pints of beer, and over 500 bottles of spirits each week. 60,000 guests pass through every year, determined to make the most of their all-inclusive experience. Let's see who's checking in this week. Sitting and standing out like sore thumbs amongst all the families are four lads and long-term mates from Sheffield. What are you drinking? A lot of smoke. Drinking vodka. Vodka Red Bull. And self-proclaimed poster boy of the gang is Ryan. And some a tattle model, so I model for like tattle magazines, motorbike magazines. What we'll do, we'll have a go for a swim, get some food, get ready, and we'll get on it. Yeah, I want a beer first. Might as well, it's all inclusive, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it might be all inclusive, but Ryan and the boys are planning a big night out. Cheers to getting wet. Cheers to getting wet. And that means out of the hotel. Get on it, big time. Get some fine Spanish monies. There are loads of benefits to an all-inclusive resort, but let's be honest, for us Brits, it's mostly about the free booze. We're on holiday because it's the summer and it's hot and it's nice and we want to get pissed. That's all we were here for. It's a cheap holiday, cheap drink. Probably start having a drink at 12 o'clock, uh, whereas, you know, most That's days while we're here. Mummy's always taught me to drink water in the day. Vodka looks like water, so... And in this little corner of the Costa Brava, the booze is always within arm's reach. As many as you want, and it's any bar, which is ideal for me. For the early birds, drinking on the resort starts at 11am sharp, and you're never far away from one of the seven bars serving everything under the sun. The cocktail we had last night was quite nice, actually. Mm. Got a little bit sickly after a while, though, I think. It reminds me of the like, strawberry milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> and it's available, quite literally, on tap. 
the benefit of it being all inclusive is there is no limit to how much you can drink. It's a mm. challenge, I would say. The alcohol range in the all inclusive is really good, though. Yeah, We've, well, because you, you recently went away I've and you, they, they basically previous. said she couldn't have, basically, any, but you were allowed, I think, what was it, tequila? There was about it was three or four all, drinks. It was literally tequila and rum, I think. And it wasn't it wasn't very nice. So I definitely think that the drinks are great. We have lost our cups a few times. When you're all inclusive, they give you a green card which you get drinks with. And you give the card in, they give you a beaker, and then you get your beat your cards back by returning the cup. Once you have your beaker in hand, you must guard it with your life. That's been the bane of our lives all holiday, those cups. Well, if you don't bring them back, you can't get your car back, so it might cost you extra, I think it's a euro. Two euros to just get some cups back? Yeah. I've never been to the hotel where I have to give my cup in to get a drink. As long as I get a drink inside me, I'm not very fussed. Just take good care of your cup. It's like you go swimming, you take the cup. You, you go, go to the, the toilet, toilet, you take, take, take your take cup. He was like, do you get where I'm going with the cup? And I was like, yeah, the cup stays with me. <laughs> The resort gets through over 24,000 litres of beer over the summer holidays. We Brits love a lager, but we also dare to dream. Coconut rum. Vodka and orange. We like sangria. Whiskey for me, yeah. Malibu. The cocktails are, like, really nice. Yeah. Lots of beers. Lots of cocktails. I'm, I'm yeah, a girl. Cocktails. I'm a real girl when it comes <laughs> to drinking. And you can get anything from a mojito to a sex on the beach. I've just had two with a vodka on the top. My wife said I should drink more coffee, so I had a coffee with brandy in. Daytime drinking in the sun is a marathon, not a sprint. But the bar staff don't seem to have got the memo. In England, you've got, like, proper shots, haven't you? Here, it's like... A couple of seconds, at least. He'll yeah. have a chat to his mate behind the bar. Oh, yeah. I would like some Coke in there as well, please, mate. <laughs> Honestly, the other night, they, they were pouring into my glass, and then the bottle that they were pouring had sort of run out. It was the dregs of the bottle. And it was like a sort of a solid inch of vodka in the bottom of the glass. And they just went and got, like, another bottle, took the lid off and carried on pouring. I had to go, like, whoa, hang on a minute. And then he's like, what's the problem? <laughs> um, I don't want to die, is what the problem <laughs> is. I'd like to actually, like, remember some of this evening. <laughs> The bloke at the bar was not even looking when he poured my vodka. He was like this. Yeah. And then I was, it was like that. half full, and I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the biggest vodka I've ever seen. That's what you want from your That's holiday. Exactly what I want. It should be a time, yeah. It's very nearly big. It might be a time. <laughs> Millions of Brits will fly into sunny Spain again this summer. The sun, sea and sangria keep calling us back. Here in Lorette de Mar, it's not just a big night out that tattoo model Ryan has inked into his holiday diary, but his other plans might surprise you. Well, I'm going for swimming in a minute. Go for a swim. Go on slide. Do you know what I mean? He wants to go on the slide, which he wants to start talking about. I'm just going to go down the slide like a normal slide guy. Are you scared? No. What's a normal slide guy? About eight years old, probably. If I want to go on the slide, I'll go on the so slide. That's, that's a new question. Just get out of my grill. Nah, because, right, I can't justify going on a slide back home. So on holiday, you're allowed to go on slides. So yes, I mentioned it 101 times, so let me go on the slide. Jeez. I want to go on that slide. Would you be here if it wasn't for the slide? No. Yeah. I, I saw a five-year-old... I am about that slide. I saw a five-year-old girl on the slide, man. She, she wasn't having fun. She's five. <laughs> she, she doesn't realise the slide life until she's at least ten. Do you know what I mean? It's all about that slide life. Ryan isn't the only one living the guitar slide life. There's two slides. A drop slide and a, a windy slide. The yellow slide is so short, but it's so scary because it's so it, it just goes boom and that's done. And the yellow oh. one, the yellow one is like hurts. really fast and it hurts again. I like the blue one the most. The blue one's a bit slower. If you sit up on the blue one, you stop. We did try and go down them, but we got stopped. <laughs> we got stuck. I just kind of literally get around the first bend and I'm just stuck. 
<laughs> I suck! <laughs> just, it, was, it was a little bit embarrassing, but that's not my life. This is Ian Dean. Are we starting? Is this it going, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A former military chef and Lorette DeMar's philosopher in residence. Am I going to have a relaxing holiday with my grandchildren? No. Do I want to be romantic? All the time. Is it everybody's choice? I don't know. We're all human beings, aren't we? Yes, we are. And Ian is here with some other human beings, a.k.a. his family, albeit begrudgingly. My son chose the hotel. Normally, I'm a villa man. Would I have chosen this myself? Probably not. It's a Spanish resort. It is what it is. I'll have a barracuito. But he's soldiering on with a positive can-do attitude. It's a cheap little cocktail. We're larkers. We have fun. And they love it. Yeah, it's good fun. Oh, lovely. Gracias. Probably had 75% of my life. And I've only got 25% left. So I want to make the most of enjoying my grandkids. Playing with dad and granddad, you get a ball to the face when you don't expect it. It's like bullying. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. As well as a bit of harmless bullying, Ian seems intent on destroying his family's livers. <laughs> they just drink. <laughs> get drunk. I always buy a nice bottle of whiskey for myself and a nice bottle of brandy for my wife for my room. So we have a little tipple every night before we go to bed. He also tells lots of fibs. He says that he has a little bit of whiskey on a night when Grandma actually tells us he's had, like, a couple of big glasses. Whatever they do whilst in Spain, the Deans like to have a drink with it, even on family days out. We went to the beach and Dad got a beer like that. Yeah, it was like that. And Mum and my grandma had a G&T. A gin and tonic. <laughs> we went down the Lorette cocktail bar, 15 euros per cocktail. We had a couple of those each. Yeah. The big question, though, is would Ian reveal if he'd prefer a day on the sauce to a day with his family? Probably not. We've met the slides, now it's time to meet the pools. <laughs> There are seven different pools for the resort's 2,000-odd guests to choose from. And it seems, for some, that's too many to comprehend. Six swimming pools for the children. Uh, there were several pools. It has six pools. I think there's, like, three or four pools. Eight pools. Change your day in, a, in an hour. You can go from this one to this one to this one. They don't know where to go first. They're just all over the place and they're so excited. Prefer the bottom pool than to, to come in up here. It's quite busy up here. And, you know, you'd have to have eyes in the back of his neck for him up here. Yeah, we probably picked this pool out of the two, A, because of the queues. It's a little less lively, do you know what I mean? So it's easy for the little kids to run about. And uh, as you can see over there, no queue at the uh, pool bar. <laughs> When you've picked your pool for the day, it's time to chill out and relax. If you can get a sunbed, that is. It's hard to get a bed round pool. We've been up early and we still haven't managed to, to get a decent place round pool in, in nine days. So by the time we're out here, half of the beds have gone. So normally, Papa wakes up a bit earlier and comes down and gets a bed. We had to chain all the sound lounges together to lock them to give everyone the chance to get a lounger. There were lots of fights and it all got very heated. They don't open till nine and people start queuing from about quarter past, half past eight onwards. And when the doors open, it's a scramble to get a sun lounger and a spot by the pool. Yeah, the first day, um, a couple had put their sunbeds out for the day, had gone away. Um, another couple then turned up later on, moved their sunbeds over, not by much, probably by, by, by about an inch. And then the, the first couple returned, took extreme offence to it, and they squared up to each other. The, the women squared up to each other. 
and uh, lifeguards had to be called, security had to be called just to settle this. And I was watching this thinking, wow, this is this is a really big insight to <laughs> to the life of being by a pool in a all-inclusive hotel. I don't think you're allowed to actually reserve like sunbeds using towels and stuff, but people do, and then people come and remove towels and take people's sunbeds, like actually lift, physically lift it up. Because I've done it myself. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I've come up here. There's been people's headscarves tied to um, sun loungers. I've took the scarfs off, picked two up, took it down for me and my friends. <laughs> I'll be telling you lies when I'll be telling you lies if I am. Yeah, yeah, we've done the Brit abroad bit. Got to get up six, seven o'clock, get my towel out, go back to bed. Yeah, they have done that. Yeah. Well, I think the Germans started, didn't they? <laughs> I think the Germans started and we just followed on. This is Jack, Ian Dean's eight-year-old grandson, and he's a bit of a heartbreaker. I've got a lot of friends who are girls, but I've got one girlfriend at home, Jessica. She's got blonde hair. She's smaller than me. She's funny. Yeah, and she's funny. She's nice. But hang on, 10-year-old Jack appears to have forgotten he's in a long-term, fully committed relationship back home, and he's plying a new girl with the hard stuff, sugar. <laughs> but how do you get your new love interest interested when she's at Aquafit? Answer, floss at her. Oh, floss off, Grandad. When flossing fails, he turns to weaponry. And it appears to work. This is what's called a life lesson. Luckily, Ryan has ticked the slide off his list. But what else happens on his perfect holiday? Girls, girls, pretty girls, good music, good atmosphere. Lock your daughter up, I'm a threat, I'm literally a threat. I will go out, right, and I will get any girl that I want because I am, in my eyes, I am unreal. I am unreal. Tell me I'm unreal. Yeah, it depends who you ask. I am unreal. Um, and when I go out, like, the confidence stinks the place up. Oh, that's what the smell is. I'm just excited to see what Ryan does. Yeah, Ryan's <laughs> a bit yeah. of a uh, jack-in-the-box. You wind it up and you never know what's going to pop yeah. out. I think he's, he's, he's good at it, though. He's, fr he's friendly about he's it. He's friendly, yeah. yeah. He's, he means no, means no harm. No, so. no. It's, it's, uh, but it's one of those. It's, it's, uh, it's something to, to behold, definitely. So what does harmless threat Ryan have planned? I'll have a good night, man. I'll have a good night. I'll have some food, I'll line my stomach, right, and then I'll put my party shoes on, um, my dancing shoes on, <laughs> and we'll get on it, man. It's a go to your move, your dancing shoes. Oh, mate, I can't dance. <laughs> Cha-cha slide to the left, isn't it? Drunk you can. Yeah, just go up to just scroll over. So, yeah, as long as I look cool, I'll get chips. Do you know what I mean? I look cool. Evan will stay out all night and just drink, drink, drink. He'll just drink until he can't stand up. Um, he goes wandering. It's like, where's Wally? Jordan's sensible. He'll be like, oh, don't do that. I'm quite, I guess I'm quite responsible, I guess, on a night out, but after, I've had, after I've had a few, it's, it's always a bit. He's younger than me, but he's often the voice of reason. Yeah. That. So Jordan's sensible. He'll have a few drinks, sensible. But when he's drunk, <laughs> it goes from Jordan to Jord. He just changes <laughs> character. He'll be stood with me, talking to women, and then he, you'll think, wow, where's that come from? I wonder which one of them will be more successful. Hmm. Time to meet a couple more of the resort guests. Recently engaged Sheffield sweethearts, Kurt and Lizzie. So I'm Lizzie. And I'm Kurt. <laughs> We're both in fast food. I will work in the kitchen, and Liz would usually be on till or serving Serve, customers. Service. He left about two weeks before I started and then came back again. And he was like a bit famous, like to all the people that worked with him before. Yeah. He used to call you Cowboy Kurt, didn't they? 
So they were like, oh my God, Cowboy Kurt's coming back. And I was like, who is this Kurt? I need to meet him. So I was quite excited to meet him. A couple of our friends actually called it first. They're yeah, like, they're they gonna like, go up. They're gonna get together and get married and all this. And I was like, yeah, right then. Yeah. Turns out they were right. <laughs>
I, I just had chips and bread. I would never have known that was chicken curry. Just because the sauce is very runny. But I'm going to try that anyway. Oh, I think she really likes that. With all you need available in the resort, most guests never feel the need to leave. But Lizzie has her heart set on a cultural excursion. When I was looking on Google Maps when we looked at it, I saw there was a cat, cat museum about a five-minute walk away from here. I believe it is a personal collection of, like, 10,000 sculptures and paintings of cats. <laughs> <laughs> it looks interesting. <laughs> They're venturing into the beautiful centre of Lorette de Mar, just across this road. There's actually a zebra crossing there that I feel like might be the same. We should probably go to the zebra crossing. We'll do. Oh, not a stop. Oh. Oh, no, they are. Oh, no, they are. <laughs> Human frogger, anyone? Oh, no. OK. He's not stopped either. Yeah. Let's walk he, he was here. telling us off for not using the zebra crossing. <laughs> I saw it. Let's go home. I don't want to get hit by a car on my way through the zebra crossing. I do. <laughs> I've been waiting for this since we booked it in January. Cat Museum. No, you have. Hmm, where is it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Could it be this place? Fuzzy. Creepy cat, Captain Fuzzy Boots. <laughs> this looks really frightening. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're going to love it. We're going to love it. We're going to have a good time. Talk Pop for the cats. I don't really like cats that much. <laughs> you go inside the big cat in. first. <laughs> you go in there. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, when we get home, that maybe we should um, redecorate. Redecorate? <laughs> wow. Oh, look at these ones. They're like 3D. <laughs> We've got a 3D cat at home. That one reminds me of my sister. <laughs> which one? <laughs> no, which sister? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my God, this one's a lamp. Looks like he's got a bright idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sailor cats. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? I definitely need a beer after this, please. Okay. A big one. Okay. To forget. <laughs> oh, just clogs that one. Oh fuck off! <laughs> please. <laughs> Say no. Please stop. <laughs> it weirded me out a bit. But it was very interesting. I would recommend it to a friend for the experience. You would? I would recommend it to a friend. I didn't really want to go to the Cat Museum, but, but I love you. <laughs> and I thought, let's just go and get it out of the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go wherever you go. <laughs> As night falls over Lorette de Mar and families settle in for some in house entertainment, the boys are hitting the town in search of action. Me, Jordan and Nathan are all proper lightweights. Evan's the only one who can drink. Obviously, he's a big lad, but we're proper lightweights. The Sheffield boys might have a big night planned, but there's just enough time to recreate a Beatles album cover first. God loves a trier, and we're the biggest triers you could ever wish to meet. <laughs> we're the biggest lightweights, but we'll try. We'll, we'll try. Right. I, give, I give it a good go. I give it a good go. We give it a good go. But we, um, it ends badly. Oh, I love an unhappy ending. Here's to a sick night, yeah? Down the end. Two, three. That's horrible. That's horrible. Have another one then, lads. <laughs> After a couple of drinks, Ryan spots his first victim. Sorry, target. I mean, girl to talk to. Nicely, in an unthreatening way. We'll play her. We'll play her. Okay, but you'll pay. Yeah, you, you will pay. You'll pay. So, them girls said to us that if, if we beat you, then they'll go their separate ways. But. If we beat them, they'll come for another drink with us. Ah. And then they absolutely smashed us. 6 3. Are you guys? 
Round him up, round him up. It's like a jack in the box. Let's go. Let's go. This way, let's go. Brian, this way, mate. This way. No, my mum told Sheffield, but my dad's a bastard, but he lives in Leeds. Salute! Where's yours? Yeah, I'm the one. And a couple more bars and general sharking. Oh, she just asked for my dick in her tits. So, did I hear that right or did I hear that right? It's top bants for the boys, whilst Ryan and Jordan are getting down to business. Salute, where are you from? Uh, French, uh, Yana. Yana, German Paul uh, Evan. Like Toulouse. Ça va? They say French is their language of love, but they obviously weren't listening to Jordan. Oui, madame. Should we get married? Should we get married? Me and you married. Of course she wants to marry you, Ryan. You're a catch. I think what he's trying to say is, would you like to come to the club with him? Shall I get your number before we go? My number? Mm. OK. Against all the odds, the girls are on board and they're heading to a club. Uh, oui. Merci beaucoup. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> Having watched Ryan's moves, the girls are thinking dancing with each other might be a better option. So I've met a world of French girl, um, sat with a friend having a drink, so we took her to the club and she's unbelievable. Um, having a few drinks in the club, seeing what happens, she's literally unbelievable. She's not just unbelievable, she's also right next to you. Jordan's cracking on with her friend. Uh, she's half Russian, half French. Um, is your friend Russian? I'm French. Your friend? Your friend? My friend is Russian. Oh, OK. Perfect. Why? Yeah. Does your friend speak English? Does she speak English? A little bit. A little yeah. bit. Do you speak English? A little, little L bit. <laughs> little bit. Please, thank you. All that. Oh, hello. Who other than Ryan thought that would happen? Hola, mi amo Tom. Mi cumpleaños es el 5 de mayo. Mi plato de plesia es el Londres porque es mucho concurrido y concurrido es bueno. A nadie le gusta un saberlo todo. While some of us Brits have the local lingo licked, it's fair to say that our Spanish vocabulary is limited to the basics. Hola. Gracias. Hola. Gracias. Adios, amigos. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's like um, okay. See. Hello, hola. 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 I know how to count up to two. Uno, tres. The waitresses, they try and speak to Rosie, like, who's four, try and speak to her in Spanish and get her to say anything. She just goes, walks off, <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, it's so cute. And often, though we might think we're speaking Spanish, we're actually not. Hola, como estas? Which is, hello, how are you? Um, Messi, thank you. French, isn't it? Garasi, I think, is please. I don't know. We Brits work on a need-to-know basis. If it's something we need to know, we make sure we know the word for it. Uh, was it cerveza? OK, that's beer. I think that means <laughs> beer, yeah. Do cerveza, por favor. Do cerveza. <laughs> the same might apply when we're getting an important point across. Ponta? That's a bitch, isn't it? I don't know. It would just be perro, cos it's that's dog. Perro is dog? Yeah, I know. Bitches. Well, we don't call people bitches dogs at home. That's what it means, though. Bitch is a female dog. It's just come from that. No, you wouldn't call them a perro, because that's a dog <laughs> in Spanish. And you don't call someone a dog at home when you want to call them a bitch. Oh, no. <laughs> you get what I mean? No, if I want to call them a dog, I'd be like a dog, mate. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you call them a bitch. You don't call them a dog. Bitches come from female dogs. I understand that. But I don't think it has a different word in Spanish. Punta, I've just told you. Are you sure? Yes. It's actually Puta. 
But when all words fail, there is the universal language of mime. If you can't get through to the staff, you, you sort of use hand gestures. We needed some toilet roll. So I asked, and she stood there going, and I went, and I just done that, and he was like, ah, and she went off in her own language and passed me a toilet roll. Benito. <laughs> Adios. Adios. While the guests enjoy the pool, the hotel unleashes the biggest Spanish army since the Armada to sort out the Brits. Well, tidy their rooms at least. The resort has 666 rooms, making it the go-to hotel for Satanists. And each year, they have 60,000 guests, one-third of which are British. Which means every day, hotel staff make 500 beds for British guests, which would keep one person busy working here just at this hotel for, what, 40 years? Nowhere else, just this hotel. I have 40 years. I have worked here for 40 years, nowhere else, just this hotel. I started at 16 and now I'm 56. I have 56. But what are we like to clean up after? The British are very friendly, they never complain, but their rooms are very messy and untidy. They always say hello, good morning, good evening, and excuse me. It tells you a lot about them. So not the lager louts that people like to paint us as. The Germans like drink, yeah, but the English, phew, different level. Oh. A cleaner came running to me, calling Maria, Maria, Maria. The guest, he was sleeping in the corridor, all wrapped up in the towels and linen from the trolley. We woke him up, and he was very apologetic, repeating, sorry, sorry, sorry. He couldn't remember his room number and just thought, oh, I'm going to sleep here. Same time manana, girls. Yeah, I got lost again. Hold on. Did you get lost again? Did you actually get lost? I don't know where I went. It's the day after the night before, and the boys aren't living their best life. Our room smelled like pure lad this morning. <laughs> I feel horrible. How nice was my chick, though? How nice was my chick? I swear down. How nice was my chick? It's like a 10 out of 10. I'm a little French and moved to France and be with my, um, be with my sweetheart. Yeah. Did you get a number? No. I've got a social media, yeah. but I'm gonna message you later. We'll, we'll meet him later. Yeah. Right, what's the plan? I wanna do some uh, water sports, me, you know. I've got the slides out of my system, but I wanna do water sports. The boys head to the beach, but it seems water sports is all talk, and Ryan has only one thing on his mind. She was unreal. <laughs> How nice was she? She was unreal. Unreal. You whispered to me at one point, she's decent, bro. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> she was unreal. Swear she down. Do you know what I mean? We don't even need to talk, because she's good looking and I'm good looking. Let's look at each other. <laughs> she shouldn't share the text. <laughs> share the text. Which text? <laughs> Jordan has texted the French girls from last night to see if they're free. <laughs> she says, well, I'm free tonight. Um, but is it possible to see you and not your friend? Don't say that. for? Welcome to Dumpsville. Population, Ryan. Why are the English, like, automatically got very good? <laughs> <laughs> she was saying to me earlier that her English is bad. So why has her English got really good? <laughs> I just don't get all these text messages. Like, she hardly speaks English because she's, she's France. So one of the messages says, I hope to see you tomorrow. I'm pausing past a kiss night without me, you. That doesn't make sense. And then, and then the next message says, tonight would be good but you to see you if possible, but not your friend. Like she's like, had an hour English lesson, right? <laughs> and then decided to write back to you. 
Because their English earlier were awful. Yeah, man. <laughs> No, I, was was, now. I think she was just saying it to you, mate. That, that was a way of paying you off, yeah. pretending that her English wasn't good. How do you say pile of in Spanish? Oh, wait, she's French. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out more about the situation. Better luck next year, Ryan. <laughs>